One of the main issues now facing Boris Johnson's new government will be the future of the United Kingdom itself. Let's take a look at what happened in Scotland and Northern Ireland. The SNP swept up 48 seats, gaining 13 on the night, making them by far the largest party. The Conservatives held on to six MPs but lost seven. The Liberal Democrats have four seats and Labour, who once dominated Scotland, have just one MP. In Northern Ireland, the DUP have eight seats, losing two, including Nigel Dodds, their Westminster leader. Sinn Féin has seven and the SDLP two, which means there are now more nationalist MPs than unionists for the first time ever. Here's Jane Dodge with more. Boris Johnson isn't the only one celebrating a landslide. The SNP has won 48 of Scotland's 59 seats, 13 more than in 2017. And for the first time ever, there are more nationalist and Republican MPs in Northern Ireland than unionists. The union looks decidedly wobbly the morning after the night before. As far as Nicola Sturgeon is concerned, an SNP landslide has strengthened her hand. So, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. It seems it won't be a Christmas card she now sends the Prime Minister, but a letter demanding a second referendum on independence. I accept that Boris Johnson has a mandate to take England out of the European Union, but he does not have a mandate to take Scotland out of the European Union, and I have a renewed and strengthened mandate to offer the people of Scotland a choice over their future, and that mandate has to be respected. One of the casualties of the SNP's success was the Liberal Democrat leader. Jo Swinson lost her seat in East Dumbartonshire by just 149 votes, her voice close to breaking as she gave her valedictory speech. For millions of people in our country, these results will bring dread and dismay and people are looking for hope. The Liberal Democrats still did better than Labour. They won four seats, the Conservatives six, but the Labour vote collapsed with their one remaining MP highly critical of his party's leadership. And I do just say to the Labour Party tonight, of which I am a very proud member and have been since I was old enough to join, if we don't reflect on this result and do something about it, then the Labour Party is going to be in a very, very bad place. And the only result of that is that we let every single person in this country down. A despondent Nigel Dodds arrived at the count in North Belfast to be told he'd lost his seat to Sinn Féin after nearly two decades at Westminster. It was one of two seats the DUP lost. The other, South Belfast, was won by the SDLP. The DUP, not so long ago, vital to the survival of the Tory government, now facing the prospect of being sidelined. You know, we will stand up for Northern Ireland as we always do. We will use whatever influence we have in Westminster and we will use the um, relationships that we have built up over this past two and a half years uh, to work for the good of Northern Ireland. That's what we intend to do. Fanukin, John, Sinn Féin. Sinn Féin's win in North Belfast has helped overturn the domination of Westminster politics by unionist politicians. Although the seven Sinn Féin MPs won't take their seats as they refuse to recognise Parliament's right to legislate for any part of Ireland. Stephen Farry from the Alliance Party will be taking his seat and, like the two new SDLP MPs, is pro-Remain. Arlene Foster has renewed her support for a return to a devolved government at Stormont. The loss of two MPs may focus the minds of the DUP on reaching a deal with Sinn Féin. Talks start on Monday. Jane Dodge there. Well, let's go back to Edinburgh now, where the Scottish National Party leader, Nicola Sturgeon, has just been speaking, pledging to begin moves to enable a second independence referendum as soon as possible. Our Scotland correspondent, Kieran Jenkins, is in Edinburgh. Kieran. Yes, Jackie, Nicola Sturgeon has just come off the stage. She said that last night's result was a watershed moment and an emphatic victory. What we can say is that what happened here in Scotland is, uh, to a large extent, the polar opposite of what happened elsewhere in the UK. Victory for a resolutely anti-Brexit party. The SNP triumphant, the Conservatives in Scotland humbled, the Lib Dems basically standing still, though they lost Joe Swinson, of course, and Labour pretty much ruined, back down to one seat in Scotland. 
But there is a question now over what this means. What sort of election was this in Scotland? Was it uh, a Brexit election? Was it an independence election? Because the weird thing is that Conservatives in Scotland put independence front and centre of their campaign and they got a pummeling. But the SNP didn't put independence as their flagship message. On the side of their bus were written the words, stop Brexit. And it was interesting, interesting that at the start of the uh, SNP campaign launch, Nicola Sturgeon stood at a podium with the word stop Brexit on it. Today, on that same podium, it said Scotland's choice. The SNP pivoting towards this messaging around an independence referendum. She says, Nicola Sturgeon, that not everyone who voted SNP is ready for independence, but she had this message for Boris Johnson. So to the Prime Minister, let me be very clear. This is not simply a demand that I or the SNP are making. It is the right of the people of Scotland. And you, as the leader of a defeated party in Scotland, have no right to stand in the way. In an independent Scotland, we will always get the governments we vote for. We will have full control of the powers and the levers needed to build a truly fair and a more prosperous country. We can take our place as an equal partner with our closest friends in the rest of the UK and across Europe and the world. The people of Scotland have spoken. It is time now to decide our own future. But Boris Johnson didn't directly address the independence question. Boris Johnson didn't mention it, uh, independence, this morning. I understand that Nicola Sturgeon and Boris Johnson haven't spoken yet, although people close to Nicola Sturgeon say the two may meet next week. And of course, independence will loom large because Boris Johnson has said he will refuse any request for a second independence referendum. It is going to be stalemate, collision, friction between Scotland and the rest of the UK. Thanks, Kieran. Well, for the first time, Northern Ireland now has more nationalist and Republican MPs than unionists, with some major defeats for the Democratic unionists, including their deputy leader. So what does that say about the future of the Stormont Assembly, which has not sat since 2017, and the failure by the two main parties to break the impasse? Our chief correspondent, Alex Thompson, is in Belfast. Alex. Says this, Jackie, that the talks that convene here on Monday have got a great deal more urgency and impetus if they didn't have it already, and they did have it already. So that's something to look for, for here immediately come Monday. The st story across Northern Ireland, really another one, a bit like Scotland to some extent, of an ununited kingdom. The SDLP, uh, Nationalists and the Republicans, Sinn Féin, formed an alliance, an electoral pact, to try and get as many pro-Remain MPs elected, not necessarily to Westminster because, of course, the, uh, the, SC, the uh, Sinn Féin uh, will not sit and their abstention policy continues. But that worked dramatically well. North Belfast, uh, Nigel Dodds, the uh, party leader in Westminster for the DUP, evicted after 18 years in power by John Finucane, in part because the SDLP stood aside there. Other way around in the south of Belfast, south of the city, where the SDLP were successful again against the DUP, largely or in some measure because uh, Sinn Féin did, uh, uh, reciprocated on the deal and stood aside there. Big questions now, though. Um, a senior unionist re-elected DUP, Sir so Geoffrey Donaldson, saying last night this has implications for political stability in Northern Ireland. Loyalist factions here will conclude that politics has not worked for them. The DUP have no influence now, being called irrelevant in some quarters because they're no longer responsible for keeping the Tory government in power. That's all gone, swept away. In a situation like Northern Ireland, where many will perceive this does bring questions of a united island a little bit perceptibly closer, the implications of that will, will unfold. One loyalist said to me last, last week, well, we're talking about a sliding scale of protest. Should this landslide happen? for the Tories, and it has, with what the, uh, the Unionists and Loyalists hate, this concept of a border uh, in the Irish Sea.